Hey guys, welcome to the Eagle Farm preview and uh, looks like a cracking card and I've got two of my nemesis here, both um, expert <laughs> mounting yard male people. So I think we'll be hearing a lot about beautiful walks and sweaty asses and uh, et cetera. Nick, how you going? nemesis, we're here to help. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm definitely to blame for that comment, Nick. Yeah. What I just said before we started there, I'm definitely to blame for that one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure there's going to be some lovely types running around on Saturday at Eagle Farm and uh, Nick's going to find them from the yard being out there. And hopefully uh, a little bit of form analysis on this program linked into Nick's late information from the yard will uh, steer us into plenty of winners. That's I think what... it's ladies, I think it's girls day out actually Saturday good, so there will be some good paraders. Oh, right. okay. Yeah, oh, look, look out. Look at I that. think That's... it's this weekend. Yeah. I'll have to double check, but I think it is, yeah. Uh, you're looking very free. You just go to the gym this morning, did you, for the first time in six months, just to, you know, buff up a little bit for Saturday. That's lovely. Yeah, no, and I'll be on all the gear tomorrow to get myself ready for Saturday. Run the Gillette <laughs> over the top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay, guys, uh, seven-metre rail, Eagle Farm, uh, Nick, uh, any opinions here? Obviously, beautiful weather the next few days, so it's all about irrigation. Um, yeah, what's your opinion? It, yeah, it is. I um, When I saw seven metres, I instantly thought, oh, hang on a minute, firm track, seven metres, this could get a bit leadery. So I, I sent a message off to a good friend of mine, also to uh, GK, who's done a couple of previews with us, mm. um, before I even went back and checked. And when I did go back and check, no, it looks like it's pretty fair help position, actually. So um, yeah. I'm assuming fair. Um, and, and GK confirmed that, and so did my other person that I, I checked with so it yeah. could get pretty firm that's the thing that that does worry me a little bit uh, i think Dooman got to a good three yesterday and this track's much firmer than Dooman, so i reckon they'll pour a heap of water onto it the next two days yeah um what is it uh six mils last 24 hours 24 mils last seven days but i'd say they'll be dosing it big time over the next couple of days oh think, massively so, yeah. i don't think there's any rain coming it's 33 34 again today so yeah they'll give it a good water for sure Beauty and Aaron, uh, what are you considering advantageous map positions? No, I tend to agree. Like Eagle Farms, probably the Flemington of Brisbane. It's really fair. It tends to hold up well, whether it's dry or uh, wet. So uh, the rail position, slightly advantageous for on speed, but um, it's still a very fair track. Okay, let's get stuck into it and find some winners. Uh, race one over the 1,300 metres for two-year-olds. And, well, you've seen most of these, Nick. There's a couple you haven't, but um, do you have a, an opinion here? Um, no, no, nothing sort of left of left field good. I think the market's got it pretty right. Um, Appellant wasn't a bad win, actually. Ran some decent sectionals and raced on speed, made its own luck. And um, I've been with Enterprise Dip Fence both times, but it just seems to hit a bit of a flat spot. This horse, and it, it doesn't show a turn of foot when they when they pick it up from the six hundred. It gets left floundering. Um, the, the extension out to thirteen hundred will certainly help it. Um, but look, I think it's between that the one and the two. Um, I noticed the five where I was in is quite firm in the market. I mean, I I don't know. I've had a look at its trials. I can't find any reason to have it firm in the market, but someone must know something. But um, I think it's between the one and the two, and um, we'll just see how they parade, but not a whole lot of interest good, to be honest. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. The price of where well, Zeno sort of makes you think maybe I should get involved, but there's mm. just too many question marks, isn't there? Because uh, I think that price is based off just connections. It must be because the trial is going to be wrong home about. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting to me. Uh, yeah, Aaron, uh, who do you like here? Yeah, I, th I thought the five, where well, Zeno looked like a three-year-old suited at 2000 So it was a strange price to be um, $5. Uh, yeah, agree with Nick. Uh, it seems a fairly obvious sort of um, skinny oh. start to the race, uh, skinny start to the meeting, but two, uh, Apulant, um, really good winner there on debut. I think I'll appreciate going up to the 1300, whereas the one, Enterprise Defence, um, they were okay trials leading into the commanding Arnis race, but then, you know, that whiskey race, I'm not sure about the format of that race. I know I had excuses, but uh, I've got slight question marks, whereas Apulant didn't do anything wrong. Didn't beat much, but um, I think I'll appreciate going up in trip. 
interesting thing in this race is if we were SP profiling it, which means, you know, we've got yeah, in the price the defense, around. proper Saturday Metropolitan race, positive jockey change with a $4 SP, while yeah. we've got a Pellant, you know, Wednesday Metropolitan race with an SP of $10. You know what I mean? It, um, if you were an SP profile guy, you'd clearly be looking for number one. Um, it's obviously far less important in um, non-exposed two-year-olds than it is with more exposed horses. But I thought that was just an interesting little point, which could lead yeah, some yeah. to sort of lean towards one. Uh, let's move on to race two over um, the 1,835. They love, they love these distances for me, don't they, Nick? They can't, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Queenslanders. Uh, off the tape measure out for this one, good, the trouble will. <laughs> Yes, and uh, what have you found here? Uh, yeah, it's um, Jungle Prince is an interesting horse. I mean, they've taken the blinkers off, which is interesting because he's really sort of charged through the bridle his first two runs, and particularly last time. I mean, they ran, they went really quick. I think they went plus eight lengths for the first 800 in that last start, um, and he gassed out late. Uh, then his first start, he, he, he got keen as well, and he, he won easily, but they were a field of, you know, they were absolute walkers behind him. Um, and they want me to butter up again at $2 even money again this week. I, I, I can't come into it. I, I just think he's too short. I mean, I sort of half understand it because I think there's a little bit of a wrap on the horse, but I can't come into it. I mean, Texas Fireball, I thought, was a better run last time. I know he sat off him a bit, but he was still... Not far off the pace. He's a more tractable horse, and he certainly beat Jungle Prince home quite convincingly and ran a better last 400 quite convincingly. And, um, I didn't really like much apart from them. I didn't I didn't think it was a very deep race at all. Uh, it's one that this program I'm sort of quite keen on it later in the day, but not so much early on, and this is another race where I'm not overly keen, but... The, the blinkers off this one will, will be interesting. It was blinkers or winkers off. I just need to double check that. Um, it is blinkers off, so that could be a key for him. Maybe he can race a bit more sensibly than he had in his first two. Beauty. Aaron? I take a very similar line to Nick, but I am keen on this race. Uh, not to tip something to win, but to be really against Jungle uh, Prince. I'm very keen to lay this horse uh, at even money. Um, agree. Beat nothing on debut there as much as it was stylish. Uh, last start did a mountain of things wrong. And when you go up in trip with a key gear change against horses that have done things, Texas Fireball, uh, New Joy, even uh, been all over, I think, um, you know, they're, they're all sort of half proven at this grade. Whereas this horse, uh, for me, has got real chinks to be even money. So rather than finding the winner, I'd rather just lay Jungle Prince. Yeah, well, um, I was thinking the same thing. Look, it's got to be a good chance because it's a super weak race. But uh, for me, there's just an easy bet, and it's number four, Texas Fireball. Um, I, the the setup for the distance is just so much better, you know. Um, I love – I mean, I know you're a bit of a fan of Martin Harley, Nick, but, I mean, Orman, for me, is ranked a point higher than him, so I'm giving that a positive jockey change. Um, and this just looks like grand final day, doesn't it? 1,100, 1,100, 1,400, 1,600. What a great sort of progression to get ready for this distance. Well, we're looking at a horse in Jungle Prince. First ever, you know, third career start up to 1,825. First preparation sort of dropped mm. out a little bit late, although doing a bit of work. Um, yeah. Look, talking about SP profiling, I'd suggest that's why Jungle Prince is what it is because it's got, the, the 180 SP last start, and oh, I wouldn't be surprised if there isn't a little bit of a correction here because um, I clearly got number four on top in a low confidence race. Lord, I am a, I am a, just on Martin Harley. I am a supporter of Martin Harley in big races. Um, okay. He does tend to show a little bit of a lack of interest when it's not overly important. So He's a grandfather. He's got a bit of G-boss about him, does he? Eh? Yeah, I think he lives. Yeah. I think Martin lives a fairly comfortable lifestyle. Good analogy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Very comfortable lifestyle, I'm led to believe. So, yeah. Okay. Let's move on to uh, race three over the 1,000 metres. And, um, Nick, what have you got here? Well, it's an interesting race. This, these 1,000 metres, we say them whenever we get them at Eagle Farm because it's a shocker of a start. They're straight on the corner and they're almost who can set a land speed record to get to the corner first. But this might be one of the rare 1,000 metre races when they don't. Uh, it looks only, to me there's only two that, could possibly really push on and lead. And one of them is obviously Hold On Honey, who has a good record track distance, good first up. I didn't mind his trial. Uh, I thought his trial was fine behind 
it was Golden Boom, wasn't it, last week? Yep. I wrote it down. Yeah, behind Golden Boom, I thought that trial was fine. Um, yeah, Day Stable, you would think are going to have a big hand in the race. They've got three in it. Um, Fetch is a horse that I've had a bit of luck with. He's got some ability. He probably sits just off it and could be the danger late. But I think it sets up pretty well for Hold On Honey to just maybe dictate this the first. If you can dictate the, if he can dictate the first 400, um, then I think he's probably going to be able to run, particularly with that weight, um, a 600 home that they won't be able to run him down. So I've, I've got him on top. Not overly keen to get involved with that price, but I think he's clearly the one to beat. Yeah, it's interesting because he's got the line through fetch, doesn't he, with that uh, yeah. they race against each other at Doombin, which, you know, you could argue either way about um, the setup here on this occasion. Uh, what have you got, Aaron? I had Hold On Honey on top uh, as well, but uh, not as short as the market's got it. I'd probably want 360 plus to play. Uh, it does look like it might find the front. It's the class runner of the field. It's got track and trip plus, uh, first up plus. The lines look reasonably good. Um, just one at $7, which, you know, there's a chance the map might work out for it, is Red Ruby, which is first Ooh. up. Uh, it's also got the track and trip plus, uh, distance tick, uh, firm track tick, and I thought the trial the other day as much as it was against nothing, it didn't get out of second gear there. And coming through five when there's sort of a small percentage chance that the inside two might want to take each other on, uh, it could just map for a really nice suck. So, um, yeah, I was two from six, but six will be a better result. Yeah, it's interesting. You've got a common line there too. They raced against each other at Eagle Farm over the 1,000 metres yeah. in the hard-to-say race. So yeah. it's a really weird sort of sprint race, isn't it, where there's so much linkage and which way do you go because um, I and it, when it becomes like that with me, I just bet off map and I think Hold On Honey completely controls. And if a horse completely controls with 53 kgs on its back off a, what is looking like a pretty hot trial, mm. um, I think that's good enough. Saying that, that, you know, you, it's not like you can pen the others. You've got to put prices against them. And by the way, the Mashanis have been going a little bit better than I expected lately too, Nick. So are, are yeah, they? Like, if they've got a bit more condition on them or what's the go? No. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no they haven't. Um, but they look, they are going all right. Um, I mean, this one's got to give them plenty of weight and and that. And look, it's, it's a chance. But you're right, they are actually going okay. Um yeah. There was a fairly amusing debate on track last week by someone talking about the Mashanis with someone who knows, and it was, uh, yeah, it was rather amusing. But um, yeah, there was it was a kind of like para at um, Sydney Metropolitan tracks yelling abuse at Waller every race. Or, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it it, it wasn't on? yelling abuse; it was very, um, very cordial. But it was actually quite amusing. Like <laughs> a certain person was insisting that they get very well fed, and then the other person was insisting, "Well, they must have worms." And then. They <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, it was it was amusing, but um, look, yeah. they're almost a bit of a cult group, this Mashani group. But yeah. yeah, they are going okay. But you're never, very, very rarely going to find one from the yard. They're just skin and bone. So yeah, they're not not for me. Beauty. Uh, race four, twenty two hundred and six meters. Uh, Nick, what have you found here? Time on to twenty two hundred and six. Well, God bless yeah. disputed river. Um, Aaron and I had a chat last Thursday, I think it was, and he was helping me through a new a new database and giving me some... And we, we just did this race in Brisbane. He goes, oh, hang on a minute, there's only two litres here. <laughs> I think I'm going to yeah. back it. So we had, I, mean, I think it was around the $12 mark and it, and it got there and we actually found the Quinella as well, which was good. So this horse is racing well, but as we said before, good, don't like these races. Um, Oakfield Wallaby is the one from down your way that's got some DF and that might be the way to go because we know what the ones are up here and they're not overly... Good. It wouldn't have to be much good to make much of an impression here. If there's any play I'm going to have at the moment, I'm, I'll see how he parades, but I could well be taking on Gollum's ain't he grand. I've been happy to be against him a couple of times this prep and, and might do so again. We know what he is, um, exposed horse. I think this trip is right at his outer limits. Uh, I think he's tried it a few times and hasn't been able to access. So I might take him on, but um, probably won't be doing a whole lot. Dispirited River could get a lovely run out in front. Yeah, that's um well, that's the thing with uh, Nick's product, guys, which you should sign up for, and that is he doesn't just give you um, plenty of winners. He 
sometimes throws in a little bit of a lay in there, which I think is uh, something that more mounting yard people should do. Like if there's something they don't like, uh, let let all the clients know that, yeah, try and get something out of this. I mean, everybody's got a Betfair account these days and they know what hitting the pink button means. So, you know, off you go. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I happily tell guys if I'm opposing something. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, for sure. Uh, Aaron, what do you got? Yeah, I've got the ad on top again. Uh, don't give too much away, Nick, here. Trying to exchange secrets. Uh, eight, I think, <laughs> I think it'll potentially uh, map the reverse to what it did last start. I think from one, it'll go forward in a reasonably slow tempo. And when you go back through the form, it seems to be able to, to still sprint late off a slow tempo, which I think is critical here. When you look at... The horses in the market that are the clear dangers, you've got Ainey Grand. I, I still don't think this is a 2,200-meter horse. No. And then you've got a horse like Oatfield Wallaby, which, yes, it's coming through Yarrawonga Lines last start, which is franked, uh, given what happened yesterday. But um, I still feel like Yarrawonga was a little bit uh, stopping on the line uh, two weeks ago. And yesterday it had every favor, given how the track was playing. And this is... Um, you know, it's Saturday grade in Brisbane, but it's still Saturday, so uh, I was happy to be with uh, just being a river each way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's Oakford Wallaby for me. I think the 18 up to the 24 last start was just a little bit too much to ask for it, so now it's had the grounding over the 24 and it drops to the 22. I kind of like that set up. The lines from New South Wales are reasonable lines. Like, they're not rock star, as Aaron mentioned, but Christ, this is a weak bunch, and it mm-hmm. wouldn't take much for the Sydney form to be uh, dominant here, so... Um, if uh, you know, if it's not like gone for this preparation, I, I expect it to be, go very close to winning this race. There's, maybe there's a chance of sending up there to spell after this run, but who knows? Has Glenn it said anything about? Maps well. Yeah, has Glenn said anything about the Lees runners lately in Sydney that you know of? Good, because geez, they look well up here lately. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I'm trying to remember whether he's put some in, and he has. Uh, I think it's it's one of those ones where you've got to be a little bit cautious from the yard, but because they. They can be a little bit, because there's a lot of mares and fillies, they're just a little bit smaller type, so to speak, but, yeah. you know, look really good and fit and well-trained and well-looked after, but, you know, not the, like, dominant beast that you get in, like, a hawk stable oh, no. or something like that, you know. Um, no, they're very interesting to watch up here. If anyone does go to track, just watch the Lee's Horses Parade and the guy that leads them around, just watch them parade. They They get a good, solid hit out almost in the parade ring, which is really interesting and... I just noticed probably the last two months, three months, they've just started to look a lot better. They, the thing you have to take notice with them if you're on track is they normally arrive here on the Thursday. They come up from the yeah. least table and arrive on the Thursday. And Mal Eggleston, ex-Newcastle guy, and Chris um, Maxley's he worked for on the Gold Coast, um, he looks after them well. And they, they, they're doing – they're having good results up here lately. Um, and they're certainly parading – Better than I'd say they did six months ago. They're looking like. Oh, it sounds got- like Nick, you want you want to get them up there on a Tuesday or a Wednesday so they get um you know an extra day with the the superior form and stable hand. Is that what you're well, suggesting? You get, <laughs> once you get out in the Queensland sun, good, you can grow. Oh, you thrive. You thrive. thrive. You, you just thrive I've, really. I've started to see your hair starting to grow up back since you've been <laughs> Queensland, mate. So, <laughs> can you see my back? <laughs> Yeah, no, look, they, they get up here on a Thursday, which I always think is pretty arduous. You know, it's a fair float trip, but um, they, they've been on track lately and they've just been thriving and running really well. So they've certainly got that pattern down. You know, they've got it really worked out well. Look for a spike there, which is great yeah. info. Uh, race five over the 1,400 metres. And uh, what have you got, Nick? Oh, I've got one a bit of value here. It's a tricky little race. Um Good old African Daisy has been scratched a couple of times and she's here. Surely it's D-Day this time for African Daisy. You'd think it's going to get all the favours, get across, sit running line, um, just off the pace. It's it's D-Day, you'd think. I, mean, I noticed they've thrown some winkers on. Um, hopefully that might compel it to get to the line of that. I must say last start when it just got beat by Betch the Crown, I'm, it's hard to be too critical of it there. I think it... it um, it was sticking its neck out and trying. It just got beat by a superior horse on the day. So, But it is one of those horses that does seem to find a superior horse quite often. Um, but one of value here that and I hate, got to, oh, shouldn't say hate, I'm not too keen on backing the jockey, but rejoiced. Um, thought it could really s- just roll along in front here. 
Uh, I liked its last run. Um, had to get off the fence a little bit last time because it looked like the inside wasn't as good as we'd hoped it would be. Don't think that'll be the case this weekend. I think it can it can roll along here. I don't think there's a lot of pressure. Um, and if you can just roll along and she gets the claim, I think that's the horse she needs to be on that stroller. Honestly, they, it's probably going to be scratched, isn't it? Um, oh, is it? Did it run today at Ipswich? I'll just bring it up. Oh, did I miss that? Um, oh, Bolt, sorry, everyone, if, if I missed that. Yeah. I mean, I don't have a problem with them doing a two-day backup, but they don't tend to do it, do they? No, no. So, yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> if it's race today, I've missed it. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, I'll just bring it up here. I'll I'll be honest, thought, I thought it was in. I'll be honest. Uh, Switch today. Yeah, t- yeah. It ran in race four. Um, what came second to a horse called Don't Stop. Uh, okay. And a dollar forty. You dodged it. Yeah, you dollar forty. Jesus All Christ. Right. Okay, well, that's made me look like a deal now. Um, well, it actually means that the map looks better. I was going to save on it as well, Nick. Well, it's taken the pace out of the race now. Well, I just, that, doesn't that bring African Daisy into it a little bit yeah, more? Yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah it, certainly, it certainly helps African Daisy now. Um, you just wonder where it's just going to have to, you just think, just push forward now. Um, you know, it's hard to back these horses that have a habit of running second, but, geez, it's... You know, it's hard to be against it here with that I, one. You know what? I'm just sick of finding this horse off that exact same rationale, Nick. It's just like, oh, this is perfect. It's got to win this time, you know? Well, you know, you're getting a habit here. 19 starts for three wins of, you know, what am I going to do? Yeah. And, and, you know, the problem is I'm probably I'm probably going to back it on Saturday. So there you um, go. I, I, I think Naval Trader will, will improve. It's a much better horse second up than first up. I didn't mind its run first up. It didn't get a whole lot of room. I thought it was pretty... Okay, through the long, the line and centre stone um, has run up here before on this track first up and, and ran really well. So it's not a it's not a walk in there for African Daisy, but it's on top, but I'm not going I won't be touching it at any sort of silly prices for sure. Yeah, beauty. Aaron, what have you got? Oh, I think it's close to a moral. Race seven, uh or number seven, African Daisy. Uh the length behind Terramata is much superior form and then what it did there, um uh, Last up behind Betcha the Crown. There's no Betcha the Crown in this race. Uh, if Rejoice has come out, which we expect it does, that just, the map is significantly in its favour. The only one I could possibly see beating it would be Naval Trader. But uh, yeah, I've got it priced longer than, it's currently $5 with Rejoice still on the market. Um, yeah, I, I'm pretty keen that African Daisy gets the right map and it's got much superior form lines to the other horses in the race like Center Stone, yes it won last start but I think I even spoke to you the night before the race and I thought I've never been in Center Stone's camp but wasn't that its race? Yeah, but I mean the thing is we've got that run at Doombin where we've got the small margin to betcha the crown which brings the line of African Daisy into a similar factor for it. The first um, run against our Marianne, though, our Marianne's a 2,000-metre horse that was first up, not ready, and he blouses it. Yeah, I, mate, I'm, I'm I'm with you. There's some negative there, but there's also linked lines with African data. There is. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. But saying that, look, I mean, you just got to map better, don't you? You're pretty sure it's the best horse. It might be a bit of a nonny, but look, to be honest, I would have just said no bet in the race if Rejoice was in, but now Rejoice is out. I think you've really got to go looking for African Daisy because... Um, Shit, they should lead, man. You know, you yeah. put the apprentice on taking two off to get down to 50, just go yee-haw on this thing, and if anything's good enough to get bar- past you, you know, good luck. Um, that has to be the plan. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, race six over the 1,400 metres, and um, I don't know what you're going to suggest here, Nick, but I, I did sense a degree of excitement in your voice when you said race six. You sounded a little bit like a castrati. You were that excited. Okay, uh, so let's let's go back twelve months, Gord. We've had without a fight, <laughs> and then we've had Bazi. Yes, and now yes. we're going transatlantic. Is the third one where? Um, but, oh, that is a big call, man. Big yeah, it's, call. Um, yeah, pretty keen. They put up. I think they put up around two forty early, and then it very quickly got out to, on a few of the corporates. Got out to three ten, three twenty, and uh, I um. I mistakenly took 290, but I went again at 320 when that came up yeah. again. So um, I think I've averaged around 305 or something like that. But, yeah, I think this is a good horse. Uh, it's um, 
to say, you know, horse, um, it was good in its first prep. I think it's got improvement off that first prep for sure. It wasn't a fully furnished looking animal there. It had plenty of physical improvement to come, I thought. Uh, thought its trials have been great, particularly the second trial I really liked. Um, I think there is one danger in the race and I'll, I'll, I've saved on it. I think the price has gone almost to save on it now and that's number three. Quite I still don't know how we got beat on that last start. Um, we're on it around that six eight dollar mark i think and clearly should have won but it keeps the same jockey on board and it's going to have to go out the back and um i'm not sure it's going to be good enough to run transit landing down who i think 1400 meter start it's a good long start here the strad break and just take its time and get over get into the running line and i think this is a pretty talented horse i think it's significant that they've kept it as a cult um it's a pretty well bred cult i think it's significant they've kept it a cult so i'm um, yeah, pretty keen to play here. I have played. Um, I think there's only two dangers are Quathcon and the other Gollum one, Petersham, who um, I think is not a bad horse, but I think this one might be at a level above those. Yeah, it's kind of a, got a bit of a smell of their uh, got a big opinion and they might be aiming for a decent race, doesn't it? Particularly yeah, starting at this time of year. And yeah, stuff. and I just thought the trials were really nice. There was a good improvement from the first trial to the second trial. And um, I expect to see a much more furnished animal when we did first prep. So I think it can go to a level that these others won't match. Beauty. Aaron? Oh, I think Nick's probably getting a touch paranoid because he's had a big, big result on the number four, Transatlantic. There's no save in the race. It's a complete moral. Uh, we spoke about this race last night. Uh, one other thing I'd touch on about this horse is the breeding. With Gustav Wynn as the dam, go and have a look at what that horse did as a three-year-old, it's absolutely phenomenal. Like, it beat Winks in an Oaks. Like, it, um, six months later, it, it runs in a Melbourne yeah, Cup. Good old, and, good old John Sargent with a three-year-old filly, eh? It's, yeah. Oh, it, it was unbelievable. But this is the only reservation I can find where the market might try and be against it. It's first up at 1,400, whereas it resumes as a, you know, off its two-year-old career. I've got absolutely no issues with it, given the breeding. Uh, I think this is the complete moral. I've got no issues with the map. The trial is brilliant. I see nothing in this race. Uh, I think this horse is going on to pretty reasonable stuff, and I'd really keep your eye on this horse going over 16, maybe even 18, 2,000. Okay, sounds like there's... Uh... Oh, it's a degree of confidence in a lightly raced horse early second preparation. Jeez, that sounds... That's your go, good. Yeah, I don't know. I won't comment in the race. Uh, race seven over the 1,200 metres. Uh, Nick, what have you got here? Hang on, no comment? What do you mean no comment? Yeah, that's you, you poor. Guys, that's you guys, poor. You guys have said that's it. Poor, you guys Lord. have said it. I, 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 I totally take note of your um, Well, it's, a, it's, it's of tomorrow. Your it's 240, but are you with it yeah. or are you against it? <laughs> well, I'm the host, theory? remember? Remember you guys? You're the expert tip to oh, Mount Yard Mail. Weak. I'm just the host today, okay? I was waiting <laughs> for the contrarian opinion there, saying you guys... <laughs> <laughs> there isn't one. There isn't one. Okay, well, you, take Jesus. On I just had a look at the figures on the others. They got nothing. If the horse has come back better. Anyway, I'm not talking about the race. Uh, race seven, 1,200 metres. Nick, what have you got? Uh, land speed record here. Um, you want to see a couple of horses go quick here. They will. Campi, Maximum Vortex, uh, Strapazi are all quick, but um, I'd be surprised if they can lead Campi. It's just a flying machine. I don't know if anyone saw its jump out or trial at the Gold Coast during the week when it won by about 20. Um it will just go. So they're going to set a really good tempo. Here. And I was, I based on that, had to look for something off speed that I thought would come over the top late. And um, pretty good judge here in Brisbane has steered me um, into having a good look at deferential. And then I went and had a really good look at deferential and looked at its sectionals and its, its win last time. Its first win at the Sunshine Coast. I mean, it's been around a while. It's had a few go goes to crack its maiden, but geez, it was a dominant win. Um, interesting one. Heathcote's had it all the way through. And then it's, He's lost it and it's gone to Healy up at the Sunshine Coast in a more relaxed environment. Um, geez, it was a, its last 400 was really impressive. It just just really cruised up and and put a gap on them. So I've got to be with it. Uh, I think the price is into about six fifty seven dollars now. I thought the early price was pretty good. I missed the early price. Did get a reasonable price. Um, all events a consistent horse, but yeah, it's not. You know, I think this deferential might have a bit more ability in Strapazi. 
obviously has done well in town, but the draw I think is a real negative for him. So I've got to be with differential on top and still a reasonable price available. Betty, Aaron, what have you got? Yeah, it's particularly weak, but I'm going to just lay the nine, Orvulant. Um, I think that's the easy play in the race. It's about 370 at the moment. I think it's probably a 1,000-metre horse. The 1,200 is a concern. The map's a concern. I think the other horses that are sort of in the 550 to $15 range are sort of around their mark and can beat it. So, you know, it just, just seems way too short for me. So uh, lay nine or beyond. Uh, the horse of interest for me is um, going to get another early prep horse and it's number eight, Evocateur. Mm-hmm. Um, just go, ever since, like Barry uh, Lockwood has got this horse flying, I reckon. T. Fenlon is an underrated jockey taking the three off to get it down to 57. Have a look at it, all the distances it's run over recently. They've all been like it, you know what I mean? Like recently since it changed and went to Barry, he started at over 14, then 16.50, then yeah. 14, then 13.50, then 15. The horse has had four starts for the 1,200 metres for three wins and a third. Now, I know that was in sort of like uh, country New South Wales stuff, but there were some strong races there. And I think if Barry has got this horse going better than ever and maybe has realised 1,200 metres is its pet distance and it'll do nothing from two on a hot tempo and peel has the extra distance running previous preparations to be strong late over the 12. I just thought $10 was sort of a, a nice little play there to find out. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's move on to race eight over the 1,200 yet again. And, um, well, we've got – well, with, there's two horses here I have a fair amount of ability about, and I'm hoping one of you two can convince me to back one or the other. Uh, Nick, what have you got? Well, I imagine, Gord, you're talking about Mullane or Outlawed. Outlawed. Yeah. Would be the two. Uh, look, Outlawed has got some ability. I like the horse. He's a, his trials were good too. Um, in saying that, uh, Mullane is certainly looks like he might have become a racehorse since they gelded him. Okay. He, he really attacked the line last time where for the last, I, it's almost 12 months before that, he just sort of was going around and being a bit of a social animal, but they finally gelded him. He did have some significant improvement left in him off the yard too. So um, I think he will run certain, I, I'd imagine he'll be improved off that, but he certainly will be improved physically off that. So if you liked him. Yeah. So you're I suggesting, because like, the only, because it's definitely the one you go looking for, but then, you you, you know, smallish margins, plundering, rejoice. That's not rock star, but... When you add in your comments from the yard and and the the uh, psychology of the animal, maybe it's a Monty. Uh, Aaron, what have you got? Well, I'm just on that too, Gord. I mean, I, I found one away from those two that I'll probably Oh, back. okay. In, yeah. um, just on the map, uh, I think she's a fair horse. I think she's pretty underrated when she comes to town. Princess Tenko, I think she'll get across and lead here. A trial at Rocky was really nice. Um, she's got some ability, this horse. She hasn't always had a lot of luck in town. She's had some shitty draws at Doom and that and been planted off speed. I think one was a Zarastro race, actually, early in his winning spree. So I think she probably gets the lead here quite comfortably. And um, they wouldn't want to let her get too cosy because she's got some ability and they'll find it really hard to run her down. Um, but I thought the dangers away from her were certainly Mullane and Outlawed, who I think's in for a pretty good prep based off the trial. Beauty. Aaron? Yeah, I'd go... Half agree, half disagree. Uh, I'm pretty happy to be in Nick's channel here because I think we're going to find the winner from the yard, uh, Mullane. If it's improved from what it did last start, it's got peak ratings that will dead set blow this field away. Uh, you just need to see a slight improvement given the chinks that this horse has got. Uh, we need to see it rock up to the races a second time and parade particularly well. But if Nick finds it on top, it'll dead set blow him away. But the other one is Outlawed, clearly, uh, which is first up. It's coming through really superior lines. It's got the track trip ticks. Uh, the distance is a plus. But again, as I said, uh, if Nick finds this horse on top, it'll blow him away as well. So I'm super keen for Yard on this race because a 5 or 12 will win. But it's just, which one does he find on top? Yeah. Um, 
Well, you, uh, well, thanks, thanks for coming on the show, guys. I'll just end it there because you've convinced me now. I'm definitely going to be having a good bet on Milan. That's all I wanted off you guys. So, uh, show over. Oh, sorry, yeah. guys. How many races well, have we got to go? Yeah. It's <laughs> got to be ready, though. It's got to have improved. It should. Uh, have been, it, man, I mean, if it gets, really if it's right in the head and everything, and you rated off some of that stuff previously, what is it? Yellow brick, red card, all this right, kind of it's, stuff. It's got like, some shit, previous man. life. Uh, figures yeah. that would just leave these for dead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Nick race nine over the fourteen hundred meters. Yeah. Interesting little race this one. Um, let me just check my notes here. I thought this was a fairly easy, yeah, bracket bet here for me, which which I love. Good. Um, yeah. We try and find one up on the pace and one that's going to be strong late. And I thought it was a fairly easy bet here. I can back two sharp dazzler and I can back eleven grand meteor. Um, I thought this race had a decent tail to it. I didn't think many of them were much good. Um, so I'll be happy to play those two. Uh, just check what prices we've got up here now about them. Um, Sharp Dazzler, he's... Um, Tony Sears is interesting at the moment. Um, he's having a bit of a Chris Waller run where the fancied one gets beaten the, the second yeah, phase yeah. over the top. He's having a bit of those runs and course he is a kiwi so that always makes you extra suspicious so um but yeah his horses are parading really well they, they always do and uh this horse has you know, got some um got some reasonable ability so you know I, I give it a reasonable chance but i did like the i did like the win of grand meteor um made its own luck in front it'll have to work a little bit to get over here but i still think it gets over okay and can dictate and um yeah i thought i'll have one in front and one out the back and yeah, and that's, that's your happy bracket place. Uh, you yeah, get everything yeah. you want there. Yeah. Um, Aaron, what do you got? Uh, lowest confidence race of the day, but I did have Grand Meteor on top. I thought, I agree with Nick. I think it'll probably find the front as much as from Barry Tan, but it's got low weight. It's gone up from 1100 where it was, you know, the leader on that occasion, but that's the chink, isn't it? Going from 12 to 11. Now it's 1400 at Saturday grade. It's not a comfy spot, but then you go back through the form of the others and it's um, it's fairly weak. So, in a very low confidence race, I was 11 on top. Yeah, we might get a little bit of form franking with Sharp Dallas's lair with um, th- some horses that it beat franking the form earlier on in the preparation, which could Texas push me in that direction. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, race 10 over the 1,600 metres. Uh, Nick, what do you got? Yeah, not uh, not a lot of confidence here, Good. I think Asians are will turn out to be the best horse. I think it is the best horse. I liked its win. I liked its action. Um, but it's pretty well found now. I think it's around the 340, 350 mark. I, I had it on top. Um, if the price holds up at the moment, Russian Mystic, I'll be backing it at $3 for a place because I think it'll just get a lovely run there. And... and um, I like it. Smooth Talks, the other one I gave a chance. But, yeah, I thought they were all reasonably even. Not a race I'll be overly involved in at this stage, I don't think. But um, we'll see how the day plays out. But Asians are on top for me. Beauty. Everybody, get in there. Get in the next room. Uh, Mountain Yard coming out between five and ten minutes before the jump and all the other extra information there, which is absolutely sensational and it's good fun. And post uh, other sort of like professional guys posting their information in there, like GK is so generous with his information, isn't yeah, he? And, um, awesome. and what a great analyst he is. And, Aaron, why don't you tell everybody about uh, your Melbourne product? Well, it's going well. Get involved. Profitable. Can you give us a, uh, give us a tip in this race too or...? I can do that afterwards. He's got to spruik his product <laughs> first. What's oh. it called, Aaron? You can do it. You're a host, mate. <laughs> Fucking hell. Why don't jump on and do this sort of dribble? <laughs> the host's not uh, adding a lot this week, the, is the he? Sign up, sign oh, up the Melbourne the Pro Mounting Yard now. If you want to bet yeah. in Melbourne, get involved. If you don't want to bet in Melbourne, don't get involved. It's fine. <laughs> it's it's oh, pretty that's, simple. That's... Okay. Well, anyway, um, more importantly then for everybody who's watching this, who's the winner of the last race? Well, I was reasonably confident on Ocean's. Uh, uh, I know it's gone up a reasonable price given the last ASP when it was dollar fifty, but uh, gee, it travelled like a really good horse in that mm. race, and I struggle to see a horse that might reach the levels that this horse is capable of. Uh, when you do the map, 
you know, you really struggle to see a couple of these that might be in the market to do some things that this horse is capable of. And it's just a profile horse, isn't it? You know, you're third up, up to 1,600, coming off your 12, 14. Like, if if this was a map positive horse, Mark would find this at odds on. Mm. The only question mark is barrier 12, it's not a map positive horse. That's the only possible chink. So if you're capable of sitting, you know, one out, three back, uh, running line on the day, you just load up on this horse. Geez, if it gets if it gets there, you're confident. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting runner. Uh, the other interesting runner for me is number 15, Smooth Talk, which I just think is running really uh, honestly at the moment. And I don't mind uh, what it did there last start. And it's definitely proven over the 1,600 metres uh, into this preparation. And, uh, you know, Maloney sticking with a horse like this, I think, is a bit of a lead as well, down to the 55 and a half. So, yep. yeah, uh, Smooth Talk is an interesting animal. So, uh, Nick, a uh, couple that you're keen to see in the yard and a couple that uh, off form you think are going to win. Well, I'm keen, obviously, Transatlantic, my day sort of, if Transatlantic doesn't um, salute, we might be eating paint or something else we can find for the next week. But, uh, yeah, pretty keen there. Um, very interested to see how Malone parades. If he looks like he's improved to me, I mean, yeah. he's really, really hard to beat if he improves off that. And I'm, I'm expecting he will. Uh, so, yeah, they're the main, they're the two that I'm, I'm looking at. And um, But I will certainly not be losing if Princess Tenko wins either. I'm okay, a bit okay. of a soft spot for her. I think she's got some ability. Beauty. Aaron? Oh, Aaron. and sorry, I should mention in race seven as well, uh, down the bottom, deferential. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, might be a horse on the up, finally. Beauty. Beauty. Aaron? Yep. Transatlantic, race six, and uh, Ocean Czar, race ten, so long as the pat suits. Beauty. Okay. Well, uh, in future, you two don't do form together before you come on one of my programs because um, too much agreement's been going on. You've you've both you've both uh, you've both well, fallen down the social media rabbit hole there, hanging out with well, each other. Well, that's when you need that. That's when you need the host to intervene during the show and get. Yeah. Me. Well, I did. I, yeah, I tried to get Aaron to promote his Melbourne program, but he he got, <laughs> he got tongue tied. Didn't know what to say. Amateur. Who cares? Amateur. If you want to join the Melbourne stuff, join it. If you want the Brisbane stuff, join the Brisbane stuff. There we go. That's better. Hey, he's the Melbourne uh, stuff's going all right, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's going <laughs> well, but if you're not inclined for the Melbourne stuff, don't worry about it. Ben, and also, ben, good, get good okay, stuff. Okay, enough, yeah, enough of your little, little hissy too. fit, Aaron. Uh, that's it. Good oh, luck and good punning, everybody. <laughs> don't forget, good Happy Valley on a Thursday night. It's good as well. Wednesday yeah, night. It's good yeah, as well. yeah, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. <laughs> good luck and good punning, guys. See ya. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot.